Hello, everybody, and welcome to another one of these photo speed artist talks. We're absolutely delighted today to have uh, legendary John Swinnell with us. John, how are you? Very well, thank you. Very well. I'm up in the Lake District at the moment um, uh, for, a couple, for a week or so, just chilling out. So, uh, yes, it's oh, lovely. Good. <laughs> Sounds good. We, I know actually, uh, and uh, Tim, obviously, Tim Jones is with us from Photospeed, he's a technical wizard. And we, we're just going to have a chat with John about some of his career, walk through some of his images, because I think it's really interesting to get kind of some of the stories. I'm sure there's plenty he can't tell us, uh, but some of the thoughts aesthetically <laughs> as, as the working photographer as well, and how maybe the industry has changed and all that sort of thing. Now, John, you mentioned you're in the Lake District. I know. Uh, obviously, a lot of people know you for your fashion and your portrait work, but I know you have a passion for the landscape and for the mountains up there as well. And I think you always wanted to escape there, didn't you? So have you managed or is this just temporary escaping? No, no, no. I did a class up here, um, which I'm in at the moment, um, about five years ago. Um, you know, it's up in the mountains and it's uh, it's perfect. It's what I've always wanted, dreamed about and stuff. You know, stay, stay, you don't have to stay at hotels anymore. It's it's a lovely a four bedroom old 300 year old sort of funny old place really but it's uh, it does the job my kids love it um family love it friends come up and stay loads of room so it's uh, yeah it's, it's, it's delightful it's delightful oh wow it might, <laughs> very it might be interesting yeah well very <laughs> it, it might be interesting to talk a little bit later about the landscape side of things just because it's interesting that a lot of the photographers uh, as they progress maybe who've been doing portraiture or fashion or even some of the you know very difficult work you know sedan etc yeah. some people have found getting into landscape photographically has been an interesting thing for them to do even if that wasn't what they were primarily known for but we, we may come to that okay. uh, but but obviously you have an excellent uh history and heritage of, of shooting portraits and fashion work for anyone who doesn't know john well i'd be amazed but he, he's shot all all manner of uh lifestyle work portraits celebrities the queen i mean that's all we need to say the queen everything under that doesn't doesn't matter but john you, you very <laughs> you very kindly shared some images with us and i just thought it's great if we can can walk through some of them uh so uh actually let's let's just jump straight in if we can tim uh, and we're going to see some uh famous faces and i would imagine obviously when when you're dealing with these types of people you you have a great experience of that and people know what they're coming to with you but maybe in the early days you know there's a time where you have to build that reputation right so what what were the most important parts of establishing your your look and, and your relationships in in that sense well the thing is with famous people rock stars or whether the actors or whatever their time is really um important and they don't really want to be in the studio. They don't, most of them don't really want to be photographed. Their PRs are saying, we need a picture for this magazine or we need something for this or that. So they turn up and I've learned to, to, to work really fast. And that's, and that's um, actually been a good good uh, thing. Uh, Prince Philip thought I was good because I worked fast. Michael, um, um, Monty Python. The, oh, Michael Palin. Michael Palin, who I, I know very well, he loves, he loves me because I'm fast, you know. And so it's, it's a kind of corny thing to say because it should be about the picture. But I, I, I work very fast and I I feel that if I, you know, if I take too long of, over a picture of a port, I can see their eyes glaze over. You know, I can see the port person I'm photographing or the woman. Um, I can see them, I can see them glazing over. So... If you you keep talking and and all the rest of it and keep their interests going, but really, it's an, a funny thing to say, but they probably don't really want to be there. It's a job they've got to do. It's you know, it's part of their career. Mm -hmm. It's you know, it's a, it's a rock stars. It's a, it's an album cover. You know, like Bob Stewart I did a while back. And they're, they're just there to do the job. And um, um, you know, if you can make it fun for them and and um, jokes or whatever you want to say, I don't care. You know, I just do whatever I need to do. I mean, some people are just very quiet, and some people are very jolly, and I don't have to do much talking at all. So um, I have to go with the flow. You, there's no there's no magic to it. There's no formula. There's no way of saying yes. When I get in the studio, I do this, 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 and this because everybody's different. I mean, everybody's different. Some people are really nice. Mm. People are not so nice. Actually, I haven't, I haven't met not so nice. They're all pretty nice, pretty good. 
do you find it do you find it you have to work very instinctively at that point then yeah just it's kind all, of you, it's all, you don't really think about it it's all instinctive kind of what is, you're doing it is instinctive you know i might have a few ideas before we start out if, if who they are and maybe work in something about their career into the picture but um not really i mean if you think of the greatest photographers in the world like irvin penn or richard Avedon and david bailey if you look at their pictures, especially the black and white ones, they're very strong and they're very quite close in and they're very um, powerful pictures. That they're, mm. they're, not, they're not easily forgettable pictures. And I worked with Bailey, so he taught me a lot about that. Um, <laughs> so I use that quite a bit. Except the, the, the funny thing is the picture you got up of Michael Caine, um, I went to his house to shoot this for, for a book, I think. And um, the, it was in Chelsea, and, the, and his apartment was really small. It was, quite, it was quite small. I was quite surprised, and I couldn't find anything in the flat of any interest to make him look interesting. I couldn't think of, and so I w went out onto the balcony, and that's what I saw on the balcony. You know, it was Get Carter in the background. So yeah. it was luck. You know, so everybody oh. looks at that and thinks of him. Get Carter, you know, well, it had nothing to do with that. It, that crane just happened to be there because there was a building site. You know, outside of, outside the, of the block of flats that he was that he was living in, and uh, so it just worked. You know, so there's a lot of accident happening when you're photographing, you photograph know, and uh, this was a kind of accident, really. And do you do you know? I mean, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a cliche, isn't it, to say you know when you've got the shot? But are you a do you feel that? I mean, obviously working digitally now, it's different as well to working in film. But even then, you know, do you feel like that's it? I know we've got it. Yes, you do. You do. And, uh, you know, you do. Uh, you can go on and on and stuff. And if I like the person a lot, I sometimes go on a little bit longer because just like it's nice being with them, you know, and uh, listening to some of their great stories. But, yeah, um, yeah, I know when I got it. Yeah. Most photographers do. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, he's such a well-known figure and such a it's capturing that essence, isn't it? And I think as we walk through these images, that that's a difficult thing to put our finger on. Tim, if we want to just um, jump yeah. on one. Because we've got a nice number of images here, and, and I think this stark, you know, look is something. Obviously, different people have done in different ways throughout the years, and and you you always reference that as well in in conversations that I've seen. But um, maybe give us a bit of the background with this particular shot with Pete. Well, it's the first time I photographed him, and um, I kind of love him on stage when he's doing the guitar and he's 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 his arms going like this all mm. the guitar. And I asked him to do a bit of that, and he said no, you know. And I thought, okay. Um, <laughs> all the things I asked him to do, he said, he said, no, he said, I don't think that's a good idea. I said, okay, fine. And I carried on and did a few more things. And then I thought I'll just do a really, really strong portrait. And um, so I came in like this, got the guitar, and he started becoming really involved and loving, you know, what I was doing. And um, so I got my picture. Um, and it was a spotlight, obviously, on the on the face and everything with a white background, stark white background. And then when I finished that, he took up the guitar and started doing all the things that I asked him to do in the beginning. So, <laughs> so I started taking some of those, but none of them were as good as this one that I set up. Um, but we did mm. have a, a good time, and he was he, he was very interested. And I enjoyed talking to him. He was a really, and I thought at the beginning he was going to be a bit, you know, a bit dowry because he was, you know, he wasn't very uh, cooperative. But in the end, he was fantastic. You know, and he's great. I love it. I love Pete Townsend. I love his music. I love the Who, and um, mm. and I, think, you know, not being too braggish about it, but I think this is one of the you know better, better pictures of Pete Townsend that exist around. You know, it's a good, strong picture. So you have to hard one to better the one. Mm. Wes, well, I was going to say it's on our um, platinum mat swatch, so it's it's obviously it's um, <laughs> the best. Isn't yeah, it? no, it's strong. You know, I think Pete said it's one of the better pictures he's ever he's had taken. Yeah. Why? Why? If, if we can pin that down, why do you think that is? Because it's true. There are certain iconic images, aren't there, of people where the the photograph matches the person, and the person matches the photograph. So here, what what is it do you think that delivers that? Well, it's easy, really, because it just tells the story. You know, it's one of the great guitarists in the world, and I've just got him leaning against the guitar, and it tells a story. It couldn't be, you know, if the guitar wasn't in it, the picture wouldn't be anything. But together, mm. that's what he's good at. What that's what he's brilliant at, in fact. Um, and it just works. It uh, it tells a story. Everybody sees that that knows the who would look at that and say, "Oh God, yeah, Pete Townsend, you know, the guitar, yeah, you know." It tells a story. I don't have to say anything. 
and there's no words to this picture it doesn't need any words it's just that stronger picture yeah and that, those are the ones that last aren't they that it's just that communication isn't it That's well, photography this, is this picture won't date i mean you know in 20 30 40 years time when i'm dead and he's dead you know young kids you know interested in rock and roll will still think this love this picture they just love it because it's mm. you know if, if they like the who this this is his hero and and i think they'll love the picture at this time john how much work was being done in the studio and how often were you having to go out to people you know was, was it always a case of getting people in if pos or did it vary just yeah i think i started in the studio i um i love the studio work and i like daylight and i love I love, you know, people like Abaddon and, and Irving Penn that, you know, just got to the soul of people. You know, they really got to the soul of people. I mean, I think Abaddon is one of the greatest portraits of, portrait uh, photographers that's ever lived. And Bailey's pretty good as well. No, obviously, Irving Penn. Those were my three. And Horst, I don't know if you've heard of Horst. He's an American photographer. Um, and this picture is very Horst. He used to light things with spotlights. And um, he did the famous picture of the, the girl from behind with the uh, corset. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's a very picture um so i i had my heroes and um we always have every artist has his hero you know a painter you know has his hero whether it's picasso or or um uh, uh, um whoever and uh, so uh lucian freud or bacon you know that you have you have your heroes and you don't copy them but they influence you they influence your work and it's a good influence if they're great photographers or great painters they're a great influence you know it's, it's better to be influenced by somebody that's brilliant and um you try to be <laughs> brilliant yourself that, that either comes or it doesn't <laughs> mm. yeah no absolutely um good stuff thank you john Let, let's just jump on one because we've got a good number of images to get through yeah. which is fab and lots of black and white and some color as well which you're going to be really interesting to talk about as well um, um but pose and and what we're wearing and obviously the look and all the things are important light back we, we, we all know that and the and the subject matter of course but how much control do you get in that sometimes you know with with especially people visiting if they turn up with two or three outfits you then have to be reactive and work with that or do you get yeah. some no, direction that's, yeah that's the way it works usually you know i mean unless i've got an idea and i phone them and say this is what i want to do it's a specific idea and how you feel about it and make sure they're happy with it but otherwise then just come in and and she had this white dress on it was lovely and i'd taken some pictures already i got the picture and um but i remember her sitting there and i just said turn and look at me because her chin was sort of that pointed chin of, of, and the jaws and everything about it and that lovely shoulder was very sexy and she's one of the easiest women to photograph because the light falls on her and she always looks good in pictures i mean she, you know she's in a getting on for 90 and uh, the light seems to love her you know i mean nobody looks that good at 90. Um, you know I'm <laughs> I know it's a bit of makeup as well, of course, you know, all that kind of stuff. But there's hardly any retouching on this, I promise you, because this was taken quite a while ago when she was a bit younger as well. But there's hardly any makeup. Whenever I had a doctor, I very, had, I very rarely had to use do, do uh, Photoshop. And in fact, in the old days, when I first started photographing the Photoshop, there wasn't Photoshop or there wasn't digital. It was film. This was film. This, mm. this, this, this was film. It was, um, um, you know, the, the old days, I suppose the old days, new days. I always think about 20 years ago is when everything changed. So I was working for 20 years on film. And then from 20 years ago, I've been working on digital. So my life has been cut in half, my career. Let's, let's jump on, Tim. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Be that because you have, you have worked, obviously, with the Royals quite a lot, John. And I would imagine, obviously, that brings its own challenges with regards access. And, and yeah. But you've got to know them, haven't you, over a period? Yeah, because it started about 35 years ago. I did um, Princess and Princess Royal. I did her uh, 40th birthday, although she's 70 now. I did her 40th birthday, and then I did her 50th, her 60th, and then late last year I did her 70th. So I did her 10 years. She's come back to me to do to, to do the pictures. And the funny thing is, the first this was I think this is with her 50th. This was her 50th or 60th. Um, and when I did her 40th, uh, obviously a bit nervous and you know detectives come out to the studio check it all out and all that kind of stuff and that was only the first time they didn't bother after that but um um her hair was you know that hairstyle she had was kind of quite mumsy and, and quite uh, on top of her head and a bit a bit heavy i thought for her face and i remember i had about five pictures to shoot and um i said after the first second third picture i said mom can we take your hair down she said no just like that nope and I said, okay, fine. I said, what, what about just a little bit? She said, no. 
flew. Anyway, I did the next pitch and then the fourth pitch. I was in the in the um, dressing room again, and they were doing. I said, "Mum, you know, a little bit of softness around the face would, might be really nice." And she said, "John, just shut up and do the picture, will you?" She said, just, <laughs> you know, said, "This is the way I have my hair. This is the look I have. You know, just get on with it, will you? But just shut up." So <laughs> I've blown it here. You know, that's it. So I did that one, and then the fifth picture, I went back into the into the into the um, dressing room again, and she'd done a little few wispies. She'd done a few wispies. I mean, it wasn't. It was a little bit softer, so she had taken in what I'd said, but, you know, but basically didn't want to admit it probably. So the last picture was a little bit softer and a bit nicer and all the rest of it, but I didn't bring it up again. I didn't, you know, say, oh, your hair looks better now. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, yeah. I basically thought that was the end of it. You know, I thought she'd never, she'd never book me again, but she's booked me every year, every 10 years for her. For oh, wow. her. So, uh, and uh, I, me <clears throat> I mentioned it to her about the first time she said oh yeah i vaguely remember you wanted to change my hair and everything driving me mad about it yeah she said i remember it yeah but anyway that was it so we're, we're, good, we're good friends now the friends mm. are of yes of course yeah i would imagine that's, <laughs> that's that's tricky enough but i mean people with such a public image it's really difficult isn't it because i you have this sort of transient moment with them obviously in this situation you've built that up over a number of visits but that exchange for just a few short minutes is is so impermanent isn't it yeah you know as you both come to it yeah no it is it is and it's and it's nice you know when you get on and it and it's a happy relationship um i mean all that matters and helps a tremendous amount when you're taking pictures let's let's get to this john because this is a curious image um is this was this forgive me was this part of a series or was this for a shoot for a particular it is, uh, a, it, is a, it is a part of a series that i did but it wasn't I didn't originally did a nude. What I did was I did an Alice in Wonderland story for Brides magazine. So um, we had, if you imagine her in a bride's dress, and then I did lots of pictures around this chair. We had the chair made up, obviously, and um, uh, brought in, and um, not brought in, but they had made it in the studio because you couldn't get it through the door. It's so big. But I had the girl in wedding dresses lying on it and, you know, coming off, falling off, <laughs> climbing on it. This was a whole story, eight pages for Brides magazine. Um, and at the end of it, I said to the girl, you know, it would be lovely to do a naked girl on top. Do you mind doing, you know, this is the way I used to do lots of nudes. The girls I used, because I, I know most of the models. And I used to say, oh, I've got a great idea for a nude. Can we do one? And then most of them said yes, 90% of the time. I said, yeah, sure, okay. And um, they've never taken their clothes off before, half of them. So I said to her, listen, let's do some nudes around this chair. I said, that's what I did. Basically, um, I did four or five pictures. It's called the chair, Big Chair Series, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> It's quite, quite interesting because um, it was quite interesting because me and Sam were actually having a little conversation about this and if it was real or not. But I think you've just answered that question that this was a huge chair. Yeah, no, it was. It's a really big chair. <laughs> I wanted to keep it as well, but we couldn't get it out. The door. <laughs> we couldn't get it out the door. And the studio said we can't have it in the studio. It's taking up too much room. So we broke it up. Sam, <laughs> it was broken up. Wow. Of course, now we do that in digital. You know. Yeah. You what, what I'm saying the challenge isn't there anymore. You see, where, mm -hmm. where you know we had to, I had to figure this out and make it work, and you know, as a fit. But um, uh, and so we built the chair and made it work. But now you just, I just photograph a chair, normal size chair, and just photograph her sitting on a box and then comp them together. And it's sad, isn't it? Don't you think? Mm. I, I mean, mm. I, I think it. as we. Um, Maybe we'll jump on one, Tim, but because it was good to get the background on that. But John, I wonder how much of because a lot of the time you're doing this for people, you're doing it for a magazine, for a client. Um, how much of the joy for you, especially during that period, was in the creation or the craft of getting the image, and how much of the joy was in the image after the fact? Um, what you mean for keepsake, or you just, I mean, just for you to reflect upon? You know, because it's your job, but but. You know, yeah. you're an artist. You know, yeah. so where where are the joy? Yeah, well, there's some images that that were wonderful that I keep I keep in my portfolio for years and years and years and put in my book. You know, I've done 13 books, and um, so yes, there's 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 certain pictures like this one. You know, the Queen um, that's um, it's got longevity. You know, it's really really uh, um, really special. Um, but it's a sad story about this one because this is oh, this is a, this was a comp because this was digital. I, I photographed her and then I dropped her into the hall but what i did was actually i photographed her and i stood on a chair and photographed her looking down slightly 
because she was just standing up straight but it looks like she's leaning towards me because mm -hmm. if i was on a chair and le i had a i think it was a 35 mil lens um and she, it looks like everybody says god how'd you get to lean forward like that but she wasn't she was just standing up straight and i was on a chair and the, the perspective looks like she's actually leaning towards me but what i did was i photographed it there and then i I took, um, I went up to, this was at uh, Windsor Castle, and I went up into the battlefield, battlements, you know, with the, with the, the whole uh, sunset and the sky behind and the whole thing, and the whole castle in the background and stuff. And I, I dropped her into that. I dropped her on top of the, in, into the, into the, on top, of, you know, standing on top of the castle, which was fantastic. You know, one of the best pictures ever taken of her, I thought. Sent it in, and um, they said, they phoned me and said, um, uh, I'm afraid the Queen can't use that picture. She can't use it. She's, and I said, doesn't she like it? She said, well, she didn't say whether she liked it or not, but she just said she can't use it. And I said, I can't believe you're saying that. I said, it's one of the best pictures I've ever taken of her. In fact, it's one of the nicest pictures I've ever taken of the Queen. And she said, look, at PR said, we all think it's great. Everybody in the palace and, and Windsor Castle thinks it's the best picture ever taken of her. But she wouldn't, she said she wouldn't be up on the battlements in her tiara and her gown and the whole you know, caboodle that she's got on. She just wouldn't be up there. She said, you know, it's totally out of character, and she's, you know, one for she's rigid for you know protocol. So, you know, her being up on the battlements in that gear was a no-no. And I said, I'm so disappointed. I said, I can't tell you how disappointed I am. I said, Can you tell her I'm disappointed? And they said, No, we're not going to tell her you're disappointed. Mad? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Well, I am. I'm so disappointed. So anyway, I was really depressed for two days, and then the PR lady called me back and said, Your Majesty realizes that you you've you know confident has done it it's, a, it's a, a, a thing on digital she suggests would you like to come and photograph st george's hall and then put her in st george's hall and i said she said that i said so you did tell her i was disappointed <laughs> yeah she said she you know she understands your disappointment so i thought that was nice you know the, the, so i couldn't i couldn't say no and i said you know you know it's not going to be as nice a picture she said the girl said, just shut up and come and do it. She said, stop moaning. <laughs> I said, okay, okay, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So that's Shop the picture. So nobody's, oh, seen, uh, nobody's ever seen the other picture. The Sunday Times offered me thousands of pounds for it. They saw it when I was they went around my house, around my studio once, and they saw the picture. And they said, my God, that picture of the Queen on the back. They said, can we have it? We'll do a double page spread. And I said, no, no. And they kept coming back, offering more and more money and more. And I said, I can't, without her permission, I cannot use it. It can't be used. So, uh, so that's the one that was used. Yeah, it's amazing oh. that position of her. You're right. That's the first thing that grabs you, isn't it? That, yeah. that slight yeah. lean in, and that's what just sets it apart from being a. You know what I mean? There's that question, isn't there, to it? Yeah, she's like she's listening to me because she can't hear me sit talking. You know. It's <laughs> <laughs> what did I you think, say, Brian? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was saying I was going to say, John. I think a lot of your work has that little question. Is probably a good word, isn't it? The kind of that, that little something in the work that I don't know if you do it intentionally or um, just pure artistic influence or just instinct it's yeah. just something a little bit tiny little bit off I, d I don't mean that in a bad way i mean in such a brilliant yeah. way I know what you're but, but is it probably just instinct yeah you know you, mm. you get you, you, something that comes up and you, you push it a bit further and push it a bit further um yeah yeah uh let's keep going because uh john i'm really happy we've got some color images in here and i uh i would imagine did I don't know. Did you primarily start introducing more color with the digital swap over? Because obviously, no. So it's it's the magazines that want it. You know what I mean? When I first first started uh, forty years ago, I mean it was like sixty percent black and white and maybe forty percent color for magazines. But now it's practically ninety five percent, ninety percent, ninety five percent color. You know, mm -hmm. and it has been over the last sort of twenty years. Um, you know, people just want color. You know, why have black and white where you can have color? color for, for something like this is too arty you know it's just um i mean black and white is too arty um mm. and magazines prefer color and uh, if they're going to show beauty this is obviously got to show the skin and everything but this is i work with a girl um a makeup artist called barbara daly who did um the makeup for clockwork orange and um um uh, what else did she do she worked with Spiel, uh, spielberg not spielberg um who who made clockwork orange um, oh, Kubrick. 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 Yeah, she worked with Kubrick, and she worked with, did quite a few films with him, and did makeup for him. She was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So I said to her, "We got to do some lipstick makeup," um, and she came up with this idea. It wasn't my idea; she came up with it, which is brilliant, isn't it? I mean, it's such a lovely idea. Mm. So simple, very simple. 
she just did striped on the she just did striped on the on the lips and then afterwards she had a second thought she said let me just do stripes on the thing as well so it's just that creative that wonderful um you know creative mind that she had and i just happened to do it got a got a nice snap out of it but yeah. it's nice when when you work with people that you know you two inspire each other or you fire off each other that's always a nice thing i mean how much collaboration do you get though because you're you're still the number one guy with the camera doing it you know but you've always got to work with either the artist or the team around that person or the person requesting it yeah well richard avedon said if you when you're in the studio if you surround yourself with talent surround yourself with the best model the best makeup artist the best hairdresser the best stylist for the clothes he said you don't have to do much <laughs> that's, what he, that's what he said and in a way he's right i mean it's, it's not right but it, in a way he's right because the more talent you have around you the, the better everything's going to look and all you've got to do then is point the camera i mean you've got to mm -hmm. you know frame it and, and and create some sort of image out of it but you know if you surround yourself with talent it's half the battle interesting yeah mm -hmm. yeah we've got in the next image um we've got uh, a very a very well-known person especially to the to the younger generation as well Helena bonham carter who's done all sorts of things and she looks like she's just packed full of kind of fun energy um and, but this b image is bizarre, so we, we need to explain that, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is bizarre. A good story behind it, though. It's a, it's a charity thing. Um, what I did was I did a charity for um, uh, Lovefish. I think it's called Lovefish. And what it was was I had to photograph lots of stars, different stars, different people, different famous people with the fish of their choice, but naked. And we the picture sold, and it, and it gave um, the charity a much needed lift um, publicly, you know, publicly. So um, I did, um, um, who else I did? I did Judy, uh, Judy, uh, Judy, uh, Judy Dench. Oh, yeah. I did Helen Bonham Carter. I did um, uh, the guy that plays uh, in Downton Abbey, who plays um, the, the Lord, what's his name? Uh, I know who you mean, yeah. I think his name's not on the tip of my tongue, but I know who you mean. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'm so dyslexic, I can't remember bloody names. Um, yeah, and, um, uh, you know, a um, lot, of, lot of famous people anyway, lots of famous people that I can't remember. <laughs> but there was lots of them, and she was one of them, basically. And so when she came in the, in the, into the studio, I said, uh, what fish do you like? And she said, tuna. And we had this big tuna. So I, <laughs> I, I did this, uh, but I did lots of great pictures with her. I mean, really, she calls, when she talks about this, she, she says, how about, uh, she calls them our porn our porn fish pictures. When I had the porn, she had her legs open from the side and I, she had the porn in between her leg like it was a, a lover and she had her arm around it. So it's really, really erotic, you know. And they used them, some of them in the papers use them as well. They're in the papers. Uh, we've got so much publicity out of it. You mentioned about having a great model and how important that is. Obviously, lots of celebrities are used to coming and standing in front of the camera and I'm sure some can come on a good day, some can come on a bad day. But when you get someone who's really kind of playful and happy to engage maybe like helena was here that that that's just makes it so much easier right and that's when the magic can start to happen no question i mean i've been photographing helena for 35 years and uh you know from from the early really early films she did and she's one of my best friends and I, I i love her and i've never ever taken a bad picture of her i mean she's so beautiful that woman is so beautiful i've never taken a bad picture of her. she's and she she'll do whatever you want she's so She's got no um, uh, ego whatsoever. I mean, she's brilliant. She's, you know, one of the best, you know, actresses in the world. I, I adore her. Um, mm. and, and as you can see, you know, again, another great picture. Uh, every time I photograph, I get a great picture. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of that is that trust that you've, you've built up with her and she knows you're going to do a good job and the, the two of you work together. Um, let's get to the final image, Tim. And uh, John, we really appreciate all the time you've given us. It's great to hear some of the background, some of the stories and such iconic imagery. And I think that's it. So many of these images, you know, they stick in your mind and it's just the classic nature of it. And things come and go, don't they? Trends come and go. But the classic ones stick, don't they? Yeah, they do, actually. They do. Um, and, and they're there forever. They don't date. It's nice. When you do a picture mm -hmm. you realize a couple of years down the line that it's still bloody good you know it's a really nice feeling i mean they don't all come out like that but a lot of them do a lot of mine do fortunately enough um but this is my wife when i first met her she, one of my first pictures it was from for english vogue double page spread for english vogue mm -hmm. um and uh, she I used to fly her across from paris all the time and she was so adorable and i booked her for everything 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 i did all the beauty shots that i got her first and eventually i got her to stay in and move in with me.
and uh, that was 40 years ago <laughs> wow that's great and and how because for time reasons because i know we're a bit tight now how what's the camera to you now what's photography to you now how much are you working and where what sort of fields do you work in with your camera well it's not i don't work half as much now because i'm getting on for 75 can you believe i'm 70, mm. 74 73 75 i can't remember anyway <laughs> So when you do fashion is a young thing, you know, it's a young thing, you know, so when you're working with 18 year old models and you're working with a 25 year old hairdresser or a 22 year old editor, a fashion editor, you know, working with the 70 year old, you know, guy, I'm not, um, I'm not, I'm not old enough to be their father. I'm old enough to be their grandfather. <laughs> so, yes. you know, so it's, uh, although I still do fashion, I still shoot fashion, you know, they still come to me, but um, I, do, I get a lot of stuff where, you know, people have, you know, some young kid has taken a fashion shoot and he messed it up, basically. And they phone me up to, God, can you help us out? Can you help out? So I come in and just uh, reshoot it for them. So I get a bit of that. But um, hmm. I work on books a lot. And um, uh, I've got two charities that I raise a lot of money for. I've got an autistic son. So I do all of that. Charity. And I um, still do my own thing. You know, I'm still, still shooting stuff. I'm you know, up in the lakes. I'm doing a thing on um, autumn in the lakes i'm doing a thing on all the churches in in the lake district so while i'm up here i've got to have something to do so i i get i do little projects you know and do you still get a buzz from the photography oh yeah yeah so I'm, i've got two books in in the wind you know to you know one of all my work all the great stuff i've ever done and another one um on helen of bon Carter. i'm going to do a book on her and then uh, another new books um going to be, be be in the in the in the mix in the next uh, 18 months so yeah i'm still uh, doing lots of stuff that's good great to hear well listen we, we've taken too much of your time but we really do appreciate it john and it's great to hear hear the background stories behind some of the images and um uh, we as i say we really do appreciate that everyone can check out john's work if they don't uh, know it i'm sure many of you will have seen it even if you didn't know it was john uh so just uh, search john swinell on google and you'll find his website there as well one thing john we should just finish with if we can just just one minute perhaps on on the print side of things because i know you you've been using photo speed papers for a while and you know it's so important isn't it to to pr produce prints and do that consistency uh, because it's really important to have that quality isn't it, in your hands yeah and the thing is with the with photography what you want is consistency what you want is you don't want any surprises unless you're trying to new things or trying to do something crazy um uh, and photo speed has never let me down. It's always been, um, I've never had a bad pa batch of, 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 of photo speed paper ever. Um, um, and if I shoot something and I put it in the file and then two years later, somebody wants a print of that, I, sh I, I print it on photo speed and it looks exactly the way it did when I, photo when I, when I, when I printed it two years before. And, and having that, it's, a, it's very safe. I feel very safe with photo speed. Because of that, you know, really safe. I know that um, the prints are going to be beautiful, um, and I've never had paper before that's been so consistent and so uh, beautiful. I mean, this, this, this. I, I, I shot it on. I did it on photo speed and, and sent. I think a copy to print for for you. I mean, that's how good it is. You know, it's really good. Yeah, fab, excellent. Well, listen, we'll let you go, John. But thank you once again for your time. We really appreciate it. Take care. Enjoy the Lake District. <laughs> and uh keep keep working right. mate it's great stuff so good night. thank you john thank you <laughs> thank you john <laughs>